with Noel for part two of this wonderful interview. And Noel has been, for me, one of the great pillars of the Ohm Choir. He has a most unique voice, and after he talks a little bit about the Ohm Choir, we'll both sing a couple of notes for you. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Ohm Choir. Yes. Your experiences. Yeah, I, I remember really the f when I came to Oroville. When I moved to Oroville, um, I had already known you uh, because I had visited in uh, in Georgia uh, right. a couple times before coming, and uh, I. I knew immediately I wanted to go. I, I had been chanting Om for many years, actually, just on my own, um, and a little bit of chanting through other through other teachings. Uh, uh, but Om, I was constantly doing inside of me, and Om Namo Bhagavate, the mantra, the mother has given, and uh, so I. I came immediately the first season. I arrived in Oroville to September 7th, 2007. And when Narad returned for that season in, I think, October or November that year, uh, I went immediately for the first uh, own choir. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was the beginning of a, <laughs> of a, long, a long journey of now being in there for seven years eight yeah. years almost yeah. and from the beginning I felt this the strength the power I mean the, the power of it the inspiration of it um, just chanting Om and growing in it as well with the whole group of people who are having that aspiration to bring down you know not a new music but also a new consciousness and a new life you know, a divine life. And for me, I immediately realized that, you know, for, I, I, inwardly for me, I, I have to go in and just surrender when I'm doing Om. I just, I offer and surrender to the divine and I let this force that I've talked about work through me and do as it will, uh, as the divine wills it. And so for me, that is the Om Choir for me. I go it within I surrender and I let this divine force descend and use my voice as it, it, it feels. And so um, a lot of times I think there's been others who have had the experience where you, you in your mind you he almost hear or think of another note that you're going to sing and it comes out completely different than you expect, you know, and, and have thought. So it happens all, you know, all the time in that because you just want to surrender and be in that that moment and in that divine presence that energy that consciousness to let it just flow more freely to get out of the way to get the ego out of the way and and in a collective aspiration in a collective way yeah yes. collective aspiration and so it has been yes a, a gift a blessing it's just very powerful it has helped me in many ways energetically, you know, to deal with difficult times in Oroville, to deal with stress and with all of the negativity that can come along with the, the yoga and, and uh, yeah, to just sort of let go and receive and offer and receive and offer and have that exchange going on. It's been, it's been wonderful. Noel's voice is a true male soprano, and it adds a richness that any other voice cannot replicate. So I'll sing a note <clears throat> in a baritone, in, bar in a baritone level, and then he will s sound the same note in his natural voice. Oh. 
and you would never know from his speaking voice <laughs> <No>. <laughs> how beautiful that sound really is. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about your poetry, yeah. uh, how it has come to you, and, mm. and yeah. the, the joy that it has given you. Yes, um, it's been one of those things that's been, again, one of the, uh, almost a mis mystery and a blessing at the same time. Um, I can't say, I mean, when I was young, I was writing uh, quite often, even in high school. You know, my teachers knew that I was a very good writer, and they told me, you, you will probably be a writer. Or, and so... Well, I can I, attest to that. I, I, uh, <laughs> his writing is absolutely beautiful. Um, it, it's some of the finest writing I've read, no matter what subject. Thank you, thank you. And so, yeah, when I when I, I would write some poetry when I was in high school, not very much. It was, it was more writing in the form of you know studies, uh, scholarly writing stuff, uh, thesis writing. So when I started to to meditate and. I was actually living in Louisiana for a time, and I was doing volunteer work there. And I started to re read some books uh, of yoga, spirituality, and and again this heart opening and the soul sort of expanding and having this really strong experience, the soul experience awakening. It it came in the form for me of of writing, like like writing more, just opening and things just flowing and it was poetry it was just long prose of just expressing things inwardly uh, inner truths inner stuff uh, for myself personally but also generally of life and so I was just writing and writing and so I had some early poetry then and it came in waves it would come and go and then when I really came for the first time to the ashram in 2002, then it, it took on a new quality. Even the rhythm of the poetry changed and it got more and more deeper and more and more inward. It just really started to flow and always with a sense of uh, some grace descending. It was something flowing through me. It was, I almost, I feel like it's not my writing, you know, it's something that's writing through me because I don't think so much during it, it's just words that flow to me and I write and sometimes I go back and I try to feel the vibration the the rhythm and the vibration of the of the words and I make changes only according to that if it doesn't feel right rather than it doesn't sound or think right It's because sometimes I can go back and read a poem that I wrote many years ago and I think I don't really remember what where that came from or what it means entirely until I I have to go to that state that it came from and so always with a lot of the the poetry I, I've kind of seen that there's some that it's kind of lower and then it gets a little bit higher in terms of the quality and the consciousness and with the higher stuff, it, it really, I know it's by the, the opening of the heart and the joy that's there when I'm writing. And sometimes there's like this struggle in the writing. It's like uh, trying, you know, I, I'm trying to keep that opening and that awareness from above of what, what wants to be expressed the, 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 the theme or the vision or the inspiration. And, Sometimes it's a few words come and then and then I'm sitting there quietly in silence for a long time and sometimes I'll write one line and then nothing more and then a week later I go back and some it just flows and things just flow together and sometimes I get pieces and then all of a sudden they start to do, it's like a puzzle and then they all come together into the poetry so it's um, something that I still, I have, can't say I've written a lot in my time, but I, I've, uh, I write when I feel it coming forward. Um, 
And you, you've published one book? I have one, yes, uh, self-published book of poetry. It's called The uh, Transcendent Sky. And I published that last year, um, or now a year, a year and a half ago. And, and once you sent me some children's stories that you yeah. wrote. Tell, yes, tell yes. us about that. I've written actually quite a lot of, uh, many more children's stories recently than I have poetry. And they're all very much uh, founded, based in spirit and yoga. And trying to find ways to bring out these truths that perhaps even adults can't get to, but that for me, children need to have the seeds planted, and, and which maybe also they touch it more easily than adults at times. So I've written some many uh, stories, and I have one children's story um, written uh, some years ago that's now being uh, printed, or it will be printed soon. It's being illustrated, and the layout is being finalized and, uh, with a grant through, through Oroville. Um, and it's called Yaroslava's Flowers. Uh, it's a story about the power and magic of flowers and the mother's uh, qualities that she has given to various flowers uh, are brought through in that story about this y little young girl named Yaroslava who it's actually based on a, a real young lady named uh, Yaroslava who is a little girl uh, working with her grandmother in Matramandir Gardens and I just had this idea for the story when, through her, through, she was always smiling and happy mm -hmm. to be in the gardens and helpful. And so uh, I wrote the story for her actually, and I gave it to her and her grandmother first, and and they they enjoyed it and liked it, and and finally it's it's had the the support I needed to to get it uh, illustrated, and now it will be printed, and hopefully within a month or two it will be coming out. So. Well, now we go into this world of flowers, this magical, beautiful world in which Mother has given us the true significance of flowers, their message to humanity. And as I have worked with them for so many years, I am fully in support of Noel's aspiration, which we will discuss now. So tell us how it first came to you. Well, um, you know, it's been, it's been probably a year or so, maybe a little bit longer, that I've had this kind of idea um, for a center, basically, to be built in Oroville. Uh, a center for education and research into flowers and in nature, into nature, um, and specifically to be a place where the flowers that Mother has named can be displayed, uh, both in in physical form, but also in f photographs and with all the information that Mother has given, and from the scientific side, but also f the spiritual side, and. Um, to also be a place where we can go more into depth of what Mother and Sri Aurobindo have said about nature itself. Um, because in Oroville in particular, there's a lot of focus on ecology, environmentalism, uh, sort of the, the, and the health aspects of, of the environment and pollution and these side. But the spiritual side of nature uh, is not really seen as and, and explored as much as it can be. So I want to bring that forward more through this center of what Mother and Sri Aurobindo have said about what is nature and what is human consciousness related to nature in general and, and how do flowers and animals and all of this play into uh, this, this yoga uh, of, of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Um, so that, that is really the core underlying aspect of it uh, but I feel that it can be much broader you know to have a space for sharing about also the botanical and horticultural and scientific side of nature and showing videos and documentaries on to to educate people and 
but but to make that merging come together between spirit and nature and matter and science and and in particular with the flowers because there's this special you know the significances and messages that they have that mother had focused so much energy and time on uh, with so many people and and to bring that forward more and to make even even to go further to make that a connecting influence in Oroville itself as part of the city throughout the whole city not just as one place to study and learn but to to have it interwoven in the whole city with the Matramandir gardens and parks, uh, the different parks that will be there um, and maybe also to eventually have a an, a place to show the evolution of, of the gardens and the nursery uh, the much mundane nursery, which is is a, a possible place that we are exploring for the site of this center. Um, so yes, it just came to me, and uh, for me, it's just it's a natural thing. I mean, I I'm interested in flowers and nature and landscaping, and so I I want to get a team together and the resources. Uh, from everyone who who has an interest in this this uh, topic in this this adventure and exploration to to get involved and participate uh, on whatever level that they can um, so we're just in the beginning idea phase right now in exploring what's possible uh, for for land and for for the project as a whole and we'll of course see how we'll have to uh, well, there will have to be Greenhouses, yeah, for propagating by seeds, by cuttings, by grafting, and cool greenhouses for the more than fifty flowers that Mother named that grow in temperate climates. Uh, Kiran at the Lake Estate, uh, Matur Udianam, is also working towards this same aspiration. So I think we have an opportunity here to to join forces yeah. in, yes. in, in the work with the ashram and Oroville to truly bring to the consciousness of, of all the importance of flowers even as sadhana. Yes. Yeah. So I wish you all the best on that and let's take a look at another phase of your life now and that is uh, Oroville at the moment. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and your experiences. We, we don't usually speak negatively in any mm -hmm. of our interviews, but uh, truthfully is, is fine. Sure. And yeah. uh, I know that you've been through a lot of experiences. Sure, yeah. So s share some of the things that have helped you to grow, to, to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Oroville is, is a, a dynamic place. It's a place where there's a lot of different influences and a lot of energies and a lot of f different types of people and, and everything. All the world is sort of symbolically represented there. So that makes it, uh, you know, an intense place to be. And that brings up both the dark and the light, you know, in all of us. And uh, the years that I've been there... Um, yeah, I mean, it's been, there have been frustrating times because we want, we know we want to go beyond all that humanity is and yet uh, we're grasping f for something that we don't know yet. We don't yet know what it should be. And a lot of the times we fall back into our old habits, the old patterns of what the, and what the world is now. And so... Um, Oroville is a mix of that. It's a mix of this aspiration and new things coming out, but at the same time, this past clinging inside of individuals and groups. And, and right now, it's, it, it is actually an interesting time because there is a new feeling, a new energy. There is a, a retreat being planned uh, with the governing board and the International Advisory Committee and which will include about 200 people uh, at the Unity Pavilion. And we're essentially, right now, I'm part of this process of 
going through all of the different areas of life that concern Oroville, which is economy, governance and organization, um, youth, uh, all of these different subjects, um, town planning, another important one, and to explore them, wh how we've, what, what has been happening in the past, and how did it get to where it is now, and what is the vision that the ideal, you know, that Mother has given to us from the text that she has given us from her words and sharing with others. Um, what is that highest vision and what does it mean to all of us? And next, how do we get there from where we're at? And there seems like there's a real energy now to focus on practical answers, on going beyond our divisions because there are very real divisions and, and uh, difficult pasts that people have not uh, healed and the lack of trust that has come out of that. And uh, these are all things that we're actually talking and exploring about together in, these, in this, this process leading up to a retreat. And even to the point where we're not sure what the retreat will be or what its outcome will be. We just know that we have to set the foundation for us to go beyond the past and come up with concrete solutions for the difficulties that are uh, before Oroville, which are, which are intense, uh, you know, the, lots of land problems, land encroachment problems, uh, land uh, buying problems, land purchase, yes, yes. land purchase in areas of the Green Belt and the city that um, and then how to take care of the, the people that are there, the, ma the maintenance of the Orovillians, which is still very difficult, the housing, food, um, essentially, and also how do we get youth to stay, who don't have lots of money to come with uh, into Oroville. And these are all subjects that we are looking, trying our best to look at honestly, you know, to look at the past and the darkness and all of this stuff that is keeping us away from that vision and to put it on the table and say how did it get to this and how can we move beyond it um, so that's going on right now and I, I in these meetings I've been to a lot of community meetings there in my time and there have been some that are very very ugly and very uh, negative and then there's others more and more as the years go that really showing how we can collaborate and how we want to move forward and and come together and these meetings have been very i think very good for for many people so far to to see how we can move forward and i think this retreat will really bring out some something new um, this year i think planning for the next three years uh, for the 50th anniversary of Oroville and then 10 years and to see how we can really come together as a collective body and not be focused so much on our individual stuff all the time. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's been feeling better. It's been feeling good to, to have these exchanges of, of groups of people in Oroville, gr groups of Orovillians to, to look at our, our issues and also to brainstorm and allow for everything to come forward and see what is going to be the answer, you know, for various problems and what, what steps can be taken. Uh, because often we can get so frustrated by the fact that we're not there wherever that is yet, you know, at the perfection that we, we want to reach for. Um, but we know we have to take steps to get to there and um, to be wise to know what those steps are and to, to uh, agree to take those steps as a community, as a collective, and not leave anybody out. Do you feel there is the beginning of a collective harmony? I would say there was, there's a beginning of a beginning of an agreement to to be this collective harmony to to explore it more deeply to understand it i think part of it is we don't we don't still understand 
what harmony really is. These, the, these words that we use, like peace and harmony and unity, um, yoga even, consciousness, we, we need to explore them on the deeper layers and levels that Mother and Sri Aurobindo have, have discussed already and, and to bring, to embody them. And so harmony is, is coming, but I would say we're just at the beginning at step. The threshold. Yes, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, there's harmony there at times, but it's still scattered. And it has to become uh, more harmonious. <laughs> the harmony has to become more harmonious uh, as we go. So. Well, I think is. that is very well put, and it's been wonderful to have you, Noel. It's been thank wonderful you. to be thank here. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me.